in 80 days, adventurer and award-winning filmmaker Paul G. Roberts retraces the global footsteps of Phileas Fogg, hero of Jules Verne's most famous work. This is the extraordinary story, the history of Venice. Today, one of the incomparable tourist destinations in all the world. It was once the capital of a great maritime republic that ruled the most powerful empire in the entire Mediterranean. And Venice's history is actually shaped by its unique location. The city of Venice spreads out over a series of 119 islands that are located in the Venetian Lagoon, a vast body of salt water separated from the Adriatic Sea by a long piece of land. This part of Italy was once inhabited by a few Illyrian tribes and the Veneti that lived on stilt houses in the lagoon. They lived off fishing and extracted salt as an enterprise from the lagoon. Now Venice was founded in 421. The Veneti who had been expelled by the Ostrogoths and the Lombards, 
They took refuge in these marshlands, in the mouth of the River Po, forming the city of Venice. The city's privileged site in the middle of a swamp gave it a great independence and made it very difficult for those that wanted to seize the land. In 810, Charlemagne's own son, Pepin of Italy and King of the Lombards, had to withdraw from the lagoon after six months of siege. It was a great natural protection. At the height of the Roman Empire, these coastal lagoons were home to only a few small fishing communities. But then, in the fifth century AD, the Western Roman Empire, which was becoming overrun by the barbarian tribes, it all changed. As Italy became a battleground for the Huns, the Goths, the Eastern Romans, and the Lombards. So many sought refuge in these lagoons. By 726, those refugees elected also to be their duke or doge, the first in an unbroken line of 117 doges who'd ruled Venice for over a thousand years. For nearly 200 years, much of Italy was ruled by a resurgent Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire. Its Italian province, known as the Exarchate of Ravenna, fell to the Lombards in 751. Only Venice held out, protected by its unique lagoons. Answering the, the Pope's call for aid, Charlemagne and the Franks came to Italy and crushed the Lombards but they also failed to take Venice. Charlemagne's son, Pepin, king of Italy, was said to have died from a fever caught in the marshes that surrounded Venice. In the following decades, Venice asserted its independence from the Byzantine Empire, and thanks to its location, it flourished as a trading hub between Europe and the East. Venetian merchants sold Italian grain and wine to the great city of Constantinople, where they bought spices and silk to sell to Western Europe. Above all though, Venice's early success came from all things, believe it or not, the trade of salt, the vital food preservative of all the Mediterranean world, harvested from the salt pans and lagoons. The Venetians went so far as to describe salt as il vero fondamento di nostro stato, the very foundation of our state. In 828, Venetian merchants visiting Alexandria smuggled the supposed body of St. Mark back to Venice to boost the standing of their home city. The famous saints' relics were interred in the great city's new church, the Basilica di San Marco. The first basilica was destroyed by the fire in 976. Today's cathedral was consecrated in 1094 and stands on the same site. 
So Mark obviously became the patron saint. His emblem, the winged lion, became the symbol of the Republic and decorated its standard. The same emblem that you will see today on the Venice Film Festival poster. Venetian trade routes to the east were plagued by pirates from the Balkan and North African coasts. So Venice built a navy, a strong navy, to drive them from the seas and garrisoned strategic harbours and islands along the Adriatic shore. By the year 1000, the Doge of Venice was also styling themselves Dukes of Dalmatia. The distinctive Venetian warship was the galley, powered up to 150 oars, triangular latine sails, rigged fore and aft. The weapons consisted of a battering ram, about 30 crossbowmen, and galleys were also used to transport high-valued cargo, such as spices, silks, and precious stones. In 1103, construction began of Venice's famous Arsenale, a giant state-owned shipyard that would become one of Europe's largest industrial centres, employing around 2,000 workmen and turning out hundreds of ships each year. The Arsenal pioneered many modern industrial techniques and underpinned Venetian naval power for centuries to follow. So armed with a powerful navy and lucrative trading connections from the Byzantine Emperor, Venice rose to become the greatest commercial and naval power in the entire Eastern Mediterranean. But Venetian power also came through shrewd negotiation and self-interest. This was the age of the Crusades, and Venice was closely involved with Crusader states as allies as trading partners. In 1202, the Fourth Crusade arrived in Venice seeking ships to take them to Egypt, but with no money to pay for them. Doge Enrico Dandolo sensed an opportunity. In exchange for loans, he first persuaded the Crusaders to capture Zadar for Venice, then relations having soured between Venice and the Byzantines, to attack Constantinople itself. In 1204, the world's greatest Christian city was sacked and plundered and self-proclaimed warriors of Christ. Venice took its share of the loot, including the most famously four bronzed horses from the Hippodrome of Constantine, which found a new home on the facade of the St. Mark's Basilica in the center of Venice. Doge Enrico and the Crusaders carved up the Byzantine Empire between them. Venice got the islands of the Aegean, Crete, and the strategically placed ports of Madonna and Corona, henceforth known as the Eyes of the Republic. But empire brought Venice unprecedented wealth and power, but also fueled a bitter rivalry between another Italian maritime state, Genoa. And for more than a century, these two Italian city-states vied for supremacy in the Eastern Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. 
the wars raging from the Levant to Sicily, the Aegean, the Black Sea and the Adriatic. During these wars, a young Venetian captain named Marco Polo was taken prisoner and used his time in a Genovese jail to dictate an account of his travels in China. The rivalry became a regional conflict. Genoa making an alliance with the Habsburg Duke of Austria, the King of Hungary and Padua, and Venice with the revived Byzantine Empire, Cyprus and Milano. The fortunes of war ebbed and flowed until 1379, when Venice came under attack from the land and sea. And with the Genovese force occupying Chioggia, just 15 miles to the south of the city. But Venice miraculously turned the tables on this battle, occupying Chioggia, just 15 miles south of the city. And when Venice turned the tables, it was by using their galleys, armed with gunpowder artillery for the first time, to trap and capture the Genovese fleet. The wars finally ended in 1381 with the Peace of Turin. If the sacking of Constantinople marked the date from which Venice grew and became an imperial power, then the city's long decline was when it lost Constantinople to Sultan Mehmet II in 1453. Another important factor that hit Venice hard was the exploration of the Americas in 1492 and Vasco da Gama's discovery of the sea route to India. During this period, the Ottoman Empire conquered the Balkans and Venice's new territories were threatened. Finally, in 1570, the Venetians had to abandon Cyprus, leaving it to the Turks. And in the following years, Crete and other Venetian territories were also seized by the Ottomans. In 1573, the Republic of Venice signed a peace treaty with the Ottoman Empire, which ended the Ottoman and Venetian War. Thanks to the Holy League, allied with the Holy See and Spain, Venice tried to retrieve its lost territories. And though it won the Battle of Lepanto against the Ottoman Empire, it was unable to recover any lost land. In addition, Venice had confronted the Pope when expanding its territory in Italy, which also led to great tensions. At the time, the Pope had powerful allies such as Louis XII of France, the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian II and Ferdinand II of Aragon. But finally, Venice's diplomacy saved it from an important confrontation with the Pope. And lastly, the plague of 1629 to 31 wiped out a third of the entire population. Venice was so diminished that Naples tried to conquer it through the Bedmar conspiracy and the Habsburg fostered the port of Trieste to weaken Venice even further. So Venice had to make significant concessions and like Genoa, had been exhausted by these wars. And while Genoa soon fell victim to internal feuding, Venice would stage an astonishing recovery, thanks in part to a unique system of government which the Republic was now ruled. During the 18th century, as Venice tried to recover, it lost influence by declaring war, war against Tunisia 
But in May 1797, Napoleon conquered Venice. And during the following years, France and Austria fought for dominion over the city. In 1797, when Napoleon Bonaparte tried to take sides with Venice, but the city refused. Napoleon took revenge by putting an end to three centuries of independence. He sacked the Bucentar, the, the Doge's state barge, stealing all the gold and precious stones he found. The barge was then sailed to France, where it was used as a galley for prisoners. The Doge Ludovico Manon and the Great Council abdicated and a pro-French municipal government was put in place. Napoleon organized the Cisalpine Republic in Italy and became its president. A few years later, Napoleon proclaimed himself Emperor of France and became the king of the Kingdom of Italy to boot. The most miraculous city of Venice, rich in gold but richer in fame, strong in power but stronger in virtue, built on both solid marble and the harmony of its citizens, Petrarch, while Western Newman was dominated by kings who claimed to rule by divine right, several Italian city-states harked back to the classical forms of government, chiefly the idea of the Republic. Res publica from the Latin, the thing of the people. However, at the height of its power, Venice's Republic, the Serenissima as it was known, was firmly in the hands of the nobility. Only those whose names were listed in the Golden Book, the city's registry of nobility, could join the Great Council, which appointed all senior officials through a complex system of voting and drawing lots. They chose 40 of their members to form the Quarantia, who supervised economic affairs, and two to three hundred to form the Senate. The main legislative body attended in addition by the Republic's admirals generals and diplomats. The elected head of government remained the Doge. His powers, though, had been steadily diminished until the 1400s when he was no more. Venetians joked that a ta he was no more powerful than a tavern sign, a decorative symbol of power, although he continued to wield wide influence. The Republic's day-to-day -day government was the Signoria, made up of the Doge, six members of his minor council and three representatives of the Quarantia. They could be joined by three boards of special advisers known as the Savi, or wise men, to form the full college. The Council of Ten, meanwhile, had a special remit to sniff out subversion. It was a system that eventually acquired so many checks and balances that change for good or ill seemed both unimaginable and undesirable. The constitution of Venice, an insuperable monument of wisdom and efficiency, so said Gasparo Contarini. Over time, an idea developed across Europe that Venice's constitution contained the three classical forms of government, democracy, oligarchy, and monarchy in perfect balance, so ensured social harmony and stability at, at the same time. The myth of Venice, as this became known, overlooked the Republic's healthy tradition of attempted coups, rampant corruption and social tension.
But the Venetians did achieve something rare in the medieval and Renaissance world, which is a durable, stable and effective government. The Serene Republic had one further strikingly modern feature. They had the best diplomats in all of Europe. Skilled ambassadors in every capital and court, sending information back to Venice in secret code across the continent. Venice would never need an advantage, for the years ahead would be dominated by bitter wars with their Italian neighbours and new challenges to the empire. Now Venice today, the biggest economy or business is based on tourism. The city is also an important cultural hub thanks to La Biennale, the film festival, and one of the most prominent universities in Italy, Sa Foscari. But nevertheless, La Serenissima suffers from a high percentage of its population leaving the city due to the negative impact of mass tourism and the high prices of the city. And that's not to mention the environmental issues of its sinking into the lagoon and climate change. <laughs> 